Hi folks, my name is Kate. I'm head of product development here at Fusion 3. Uh, today we're going to talk about one of the features in the edge, which is the nozzle offset calibration process. The nozzle offset calibration is where we're measuring the distance between the tip of the printhead and the tip of the bed probe. This distance is critical because it determines the first layer height of your print. And if you've used 3D printers before, you know how critical that is to the success of your print and how difficult this can be for new users to wrap their heads around, understand, and, and work with correctly. So with Edge, uh, we've tried to automate this process as much as possible. Um, the machine can check itself and it can uh, correct for some errors it encounters. Obviously, it can't correct for everything. And what we're going to walk through today is kind of the steps in that process, what it's supposed to do, what it's supposed to look like. And we'll also talk about some of the um, ways it can encounter errors and what you can do to fix them in those cases. So what I've got here are some videos of that nozzle offset process. I'm doing it this way so I can pause these videos and talk through what each step looks like instead of trying to do it in real time. So the first thing the printers do is it's going to home itself. And this is not very interesting. And if you've used our printers before, you know what it looks like. So we're basically, the bed's going to go down. The head is going to come forward. I'm going to skip through just a little bit here. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to probe the bed once with the bed probe. The reason we're doing this is we need to know the exact Z height of the bed. Um, by intent, our machines are set up so the Z axis switch at the bottom and the um, distance the Z axis travels are set up so you cannot collide the print head with the bed. Um, and so what that means is that Z equals zero without doing this, the bed's too far away from the print head and that's intentional because it's safe. So what we do to correct that is we use the bed probe to determine where the bed is. Now, if you do this during a print, uh, or with quick turn and with quick turn mode off, I should say, it's going to do it in the back corner on the scrub plate. If you're doing this standalone, or if you're doing this with quick turn mode enabled, it's going to do it in the center of the bed. And I'm actually going to switch videos here to a video that is a little bit easier to see. So this is that first probe just to establish where the bed is. And now we're heating the print head. What we're going to do next is what's called a ram purge. This is a procedure to basically clear all molten filament out of the print head. What, we, what we're trying to do is limit the amount of oozing that we're going to get out of the print head during the rest of this process since this is done with the print head hot. And essentially what we're going to do is we're going to feed forward very rapidly. We're going to use that to purge all the molten filament and then we're going to retract very rapidly as well. And what we're going to do by doing this, we're not giving the new material time to really melt. And so we can clear a lot of the molten material out and have very little uh, residue in the print head. Now again, I'm going to skip forward a little bit because we're just watching the print head heat up, which from this angle is not very interesting. Okay, there we go. So it's going to do the ram purge. Now it's going to attempt to shake this off by itself by moving the print head and, and turning the blower on. It didn't do it in this case, that's okay. Um, the scrub head will usually take that off. So now we're cleaning the tip of the print head so we can get good electrical contact. This is our first probe with the tip of the nozzle. I'm going to pause it here. Again, what we're trying to establish is electrical contact between the tip of the nozzle here and the scrub plate. This tells us the height of the nozzle. Now, the first probe is done and then we scrub. I'm going to pause it again. What we're doing is we're doing a final scrub to make sure there's no carbon buildup on the very tip of the printhead. We're cleaning it off by scrubbing against the scrub plate itself. Then we're going to come in for a second probe. This is the one that really counts and the one we use to measure. And then we probe that same location with the bed probe. Okay, and that gives us our first offset. Okay. 
All right, so we just did the first nozzle probe and then the first probe with the bed probe. Now, let's go over to the console so you can see what message this is going to spit up. This is going to spit this Z probe trigger height set to whatever. Just this first one. This machine I'm showing you has been used to do this a lot, so there's some extra messages. This is going to show up in the console. It's also going to show up in the bottom of the screen as a little blue pop-up message. And if you remember, blue pop-ups are fine. They're just messages. They're not necessarily errors. So let's go ahead and resume our video. So that gives us point one. Now we have to do this again because remember, the, the correct nozzle offset can actually drift dramatically. So the only safe thing we can compare it to is another measurement. It's not the measurement we have from yesterday. It's not the measurement we took, you know, two hours ago. We have to do this twice in succession and then compare the values to each other in order to make sure that one or, one or both of these bed probes um, didn't malfunction. Essentially what we want to make sure is that we don't get, get a bad value and then try to print with that bad value. So by getting two values and comparing them to each other, we can make sure that we haven't screwed up somewhere. Okay, so we're basically going to repeat that same process. We're going to probe with the nozzle. First probe is used to scrub. Second probe is for real. And then we're going to probe with the bed probe. All right, and then if we go back to our console, that would give us the second message. Okay. Now, okay, so now some stuff happens in the background. The printer is going to do a few things with these two numbers. The first thing it's going to do is make sure they're within 0 0.05 millimeters of each other. If they're outside of that threshold, we assume something went wrong and one or both of those values is bad. If that happens, we're going to go back and take a new value. We'll talk more about that in a second. If both values are within 0.05 of each other, the second thing it's going to do is make sure that result is within a safe range. Uh, right now that's within like 1.5 to 4.5 millimeters or something like that. If it falls outside of that window, we assume there's a mechanical issue with something, either the print head or the bed probe or, you know, something is not installed correctly, something is knocked out of alignment. Um, Again, we're trying to make sure that we don't get a bad value and then try to print with it and potentially break something or damage the printer or cause a failed, you know, 80 hour print or something. Okay, and assuming we pass all those checks, the value is considered good and the printer is going to use it. Now, let's talk about where this process can fall down and what happens when it does. So there are a number of points in this process where something can potentially go wrong. Um, we can fail to get the, you know, we can fail to get electrical continuity between the scrub plate and the nozzle. If that happens, it's programmed to retry that three times. Um, you're going to get a pop-up message that talks about, uh, says something like, um, the nozzle probe failed, we're going to retry. Um, it'll up try that up to three times. If that fails, it kind of exits back out to the outer end of the loop and it'll try the RAM purge again, it'll try cleaning the print head again, and then it'll try to probe with the print head again. This whole process is a big uh, loop in the printer. It's programmed to try this up to seven times and the objective again is to get two values within 0.05 of each other. If it can't do that, it will throw an error and it will stop your print. That's kind of the point at which it needs your intervention, is after those seven tries, it'll tell you, hey, I've tried seven times, I failed to get a good calibration, and you need to come help me because something's wrong. That's usually where we see the issues. Um, if you have a lot of bed probe issues, a lot of errors, a lot of retries, the we have a help document about this. Um, usually, this is caused by a lot of debris on the print head and that's pretty easy to, to correct. You heat the print head up, you scrub it with the brass bristle brush, and you try again. Um, there's more information in the help document. I won't go through all that here, um, but this is the basics of the nozzle offset process, why we do it the way we do, and hopefully that helps you understand what the objective of that is and how it makes your printer easy to use on a day-to-day -day basis.